This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence and run your business. Okay, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about the idea of opportunity within photography, but real quick, I wanna start with a very funny story. I think this happened, I don't know, gosh, a couple weeks ago. So if you subscribe to this channel, you probably are aware that I am a Jeep man. I have a Jeep Wrangler, I've had it since 2001, and for those of you who have ever owned a Jeep, you know that there's kind of this Jeep cultural thing. You probably know about the wave. It's a Jeep thing. So when you're on the road, somebody's driving in the opposite direction that's also in a Jeep, usually there's an exchange of a wave between the two drivers. So a couple weeks ago, I had some errands to run and I was out and about. And so I was on 8th Avenue over here, which is a really busy street. And the distance between here and the interstate is it's less than a mile. But with all the construction, the hospitals, the cool neighborhoods and stuff, it's just it takes like 10 minutes to get there. So I'm driving towards I-30 and I'm on 8th and I'm in the right lane and all of a sudden the car in front of me moves and reveals a bunch of barricades. So I have to stop and I look in the rearview mirror and everybody behind me is going around and I, I have no hope at this point. So a few cars pass and in my rearview mirror I can see way back this black Jeep that's flashing his brights at me and I'm like, okay, this is a Jeep thing. This guy's gonna let me in. This is cool. So this guy lets me in. I do the wave. I get a wave back. We get up to the stoplight and all of a sudden that Jeep comes up right next to me. Of course, neither one of us have air conditioning that's functioning. So everybody had their windows down. And this guy, he, he's a Jeep guy. So he's gonna be cool, you know. And so he looks over and he goes, nice Wrangler. He said, what year? And I said, oh, mine's a 2001. I said, I like your Jeep. What, what, what year do you have? And he says, holy crap, are you on YouTube? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm totally flattered to be recognized. And he goes, well, I'm into photography. And I said, oh, that's awesome. And then right then the light changes and everybody. And so I'm like, uh, see you around. And I felt really bad the rest of the day. I mean, it was a cool story. It's really awesome to get recognized. But at the same time, it's like, I really felt bad, but what else are you going to do? So Anyway, that was the story for then. And then two weeks later, I'm giving my talk over at Fort Worth Camera as part of PhotoFest. And I got there a little bit earlier. I'm sitting there talking to people. And this guy comes up and he says, hey, I'm Micah. I'm the Jeep guy, which was totally awesome. It turns out Mike is not only a Jeep guy, he's a film guy and he's a Holga guy. So three things and I'm like, oh, we are gonna be buddies. So Micah, thanks for coming out. It was fun to hang out. Anyway, it was a cool story and I guess a small world. You never know what's gonna happen. But anyway, I do have a topic that I want to discuss with you guys today, but I wanted to share that story. So we're gonna talk about the idea of opportunity. So I'm clearly passionate about photography. It's something that I've spent my life doing. I have a YouTube channel. Channel. I talk about this for a living. I absolutely love photography, not just as an art form, but all the technical things that surround it. I mean, photography is something that involves optics, it involves physics, it involves chemistry. It now involves computer and digital technology. It's, it's amazing from a technical perspective. It's amazing from an artistic perspective. And I clearly have an utmost respect for news reporting and you know sports reporting, anything that's done in this whole world of photography. But what's interesting about it is in the last 10 years or so, I've noticed that we've had a bigger change in photography than we've ever had before. Now, a lot of this clearly has to do with the proliferation of cell phones. And once we got digital technology into phones, everyone has a camera, everyone is a photographer, so to speak, which, you know, is kind of to be expected. It doesn't mean that you're going to be competing with everybody, but I think a lot of people feel that way. I think the second thing is the rise of social media, especially photography-based platforms such as Instagram that have come along, they've gotten very popular, and they've taken photography into kind of a more generic public realm where people use photography in a very different way than somebody who's really serious about photography is. And the result of all this, and it's one thing that really kind of makes me sad at times and, and bothers me to an extent is the amount of negativity that comes into our world of photography. You see this online all the time. If you have a YouTube channel, you see it in the comments. People are legitimately frustrated about things. And I want to talk about that and break that down a little bit. And I hope that I can be slightly inspiring to you guys because I don't think it's doomsday. I think a lot of it is just a mindset and how we look at things, how we respond to them, and what we invest into ourselves. So when I was a kid, I was very fortunate in that my father and I are very close. My dad is an artist and he was always very encouraging and very inspiring to me. He was also very pragmatic about it and was also like, are you sure you wanna do this? And so I was always sure, but there was always a little bit of that reality aspect of it. But at times when I would get frustrated growing up, especially when I was going through my big music phase, when I was in college, I studied music and I played guitar and the whole 
whole thing. And I remember at one point I was expressing some frustration and my father looked at me and he said, you know, he said, uh, you literally can do anything you want to do in life. Nothing can stop you. He said, but what you have to understand is that everything in life comes with a price tag on it. Of course, he wasn't talking about money necessarily, but by everything comes with a price, it means that everything comes with some kind of sacrifice, some kind of dues that you're going to have to pay in order to be able to do that. And so this has always been very fascinating with me because no matter what it is you want to do, if you want to, you know, play in a band and get a record deal and make music, there's a long road of sacrifice that you're going to have to give up. There's going to be lean times financially. There's going to, you know, and everything is like this. And if you're willing to pay that price, quote unquote, to do that, then you're going to have the freedom to be happy and be able to achieve that goal. You're also going to be presented with possibilities of, do I really have the stomach for this? And then the part that I think can be interesting is then opportunities can present themselves along the way. So you may have this one path that you're going on. You may realize, eh, this may not be exactly what I want to do, but it opens the door to something else that you hadn't thought of earlier. Like YouTube was like that for me. It's like, okay, you wanna be a photographer or wait a minute, here's this platform where you can talk about photography. I don't have to have clients. And so anyway, that was an opportunity for me. And my dad also shared a quote with me, and I shared this actually in my presentation over at Fort Worth Camera. It's a Thomas Edison quote, and it's always stuck with me, and it just rings true so much. He said, opportunity is missed by most people because it comes dressed in overalls and looks like work. That quote couldn't be any more true. And what I love about that quote is that one, it addresses the fact that, okay, this is an opportunity, and most people expect opportunities to be something that's just handed to them. I think a lot of people see people who are successful and assume that it was easy or they assume that something was just given to them and they don't see all those hours of work and all sometimes those years of work that went into something to get to where they are. They just see it presented and so there's an assumption that it was the easy route which is kind of a bummer. But the good news is, is that you don't have to be like most people. Therefore, your competition got a lot less. All you have to be willing to do is put in the hard work, put in the time, and be patient, and things can happen. The key thing I wanna stress in there, though, is the patience aspect of it. There's no timeline, there's no guarantee, and depending on what your goals are and what you want to do, and I'm gonna tell you a story about a friend of mine in a second that will make a lot of sense out of this, but you also have to be very patient. Something Sometimes it takes a while, and people don't have have that patience and then they give up too early or they get frustrated too early or the worst is that they just let it get to them and they become cynical too early and then once you become cynical I think that's kind of the enemy it's kind of over at that point so it's really important to keep that positivity alive be patient look for the beauty in things and move forward I want to share a story with you about a very good friend of mine who is now a professional photographer and that was his dream and I want to talk a little bit about him because he's somebody who inspires me a great deal not just because we're friends. I'm really honored to be his friend. But real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. You know, as much complaining I hear about Instagram, most people don't put forth the effort to build their own website and they don't realize the opportunity that that could be. So let me tell you about these folks at Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to build a website, photo gallery, or online store without having to write a single line of code. Start with one of their gorgeous templates, use their drag and drop interface, build your brand online. Online, but Squarespace is way more than just a way to build a website. Squarespace provides an amazing set of tools to create revenue and run a business. Squarespace now features dedicated member areas, allowing you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through members only content. You can manage members, you can send them email communications, and you can leverage audience insights. Building an e commerce site couldn't be any easier, and Squarespace now also supports collecting donations. So you can get support for a cause or charity by gathering contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo and build your audience using social sharing. The Squarespace blogging platform has a sharing button that you can customize that's going to allow sharing on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, StumbleUpon, Reddit, Pinterest, and Tumblr. So head over to Squarespace for a free trial. Once you feel that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your first order by using offer code AOP on checkout or just use the link below this video. Once again, that offer code is AOP and I wanna give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, story time. If you've followed the show for a number of years, this was a while back, you might remember my friend Wade Griffith. Wade and I, he 
did a show with me once, but we used to do this podcast together and we do this thing every week. It was called The Photography Show. I know, really unique name. But anyway, we did The Photography Show together. But when I first met Wade, it was years before that. He was actually a graphic designer at the time. So was my sister. They worked in an office together and that's how we met. And I knew that Wade had an interest in photography. So we kind of just bonded because we shared this common passion for this hobby that we both had at the time. And it was really awesome. A couple of years later, Wade and I signed up to take this class with this guy who was teaching darkroom analog process. And so we learned how to develop film. We learned how to print. We would do this class together. And it was a lot of fun from a social perspective. It was also fun because we were learning all these new things. Wade did shoot a lot of film at that time. He was also shooting digital. He was way more into that side than I was at that time. But I remember one day Wade telling me, we were having coffee, and he said, you know, I think I'm really frustrated being a designer for a living. I'm going to have a career switch, and I want to shoot commercial photography. I want to be a professional photographer. So this would have been 2003, early 2000, somewhere in there. And at the time, the business was changing drastically. In stock photography, Getty images, they were all becoming a thing. This was before you had free stock photography, but that was really killing off a lot of professional photography. And the fact that a company could go and rather than pay a photographer thousands of dollars to travel around the world to shoot something, they could jump online and buy a $30 downloadable photograph that was high res that they could print and have the rights to do it and the whole thing. And it's done in five minutes. And so this was something that was really changing the professional world of photography and the commercial sense at that time is people were competing with stock photography. In fact, I even remember at the time because we had a lot of mutual friends in the industry, people would tell me, Wade's nuts, he's out, he's, he's out of his mind. What is he doing? He's gonna like, he's, he's, he's married, uh, they've got a house now, he's got a mortgage. He's going into an industry that doesn't exist, like he shouldn't do this. There was all this negativity that was surrounding what Wade was trying to do, but the thing that impresses me so much about this, as I said this earlier, is that everything in life comes with that price. And if you're willing to pay it, and you're willing to figure it out, and you're willing to look for those opportunities, it's very key, you actually can succeed, which is exactly what he did. So Wade started doing a lot of different types of jobs and he realized that there were certain sectors of things that couldn't use stock photography. Anything custom where you know, you've know you designed something or built something that doesn't exist anywhere else, you can't find on Getty Images. It doesn't exist in stock. And so he started honing in on those opportunities. And today he's one of the most in-demand architectural photographers around town. He's got several architectural firms that he regularly works for. And when they have a building that they've finished, they either fly him out or if it's local, he stays here, but he gets to photograph that and put it in his portfolio charge, make a living, the whole thing. And it's amazing because guess what? He did it. Everyone said he couldn't do it. And I had my doubts too. I remember, well, that's a bold move. But I mean, of course, as a friend, I'm trying to be very supportive, but watching him turn into this thing that he always wanted to do is, I mean, it's something that to this day just inspires me is, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to have him as a friend, but, and to be able to see all this up close, it really is impressive and it's one of just the most amazing things I've ever seen with anybody that I've known. I also want to mention that Wade is one of the most positive people I know. He's extremely funny. He's a little bit of the class clown, which is part of his charm. And he's a really fun person to know, but he's not down. He's high energy. He's enthusiastic. He doesn't hear no is a term that he's going to understand. It's always positive with him. And that's one thing that I actually really love. And I think that so much of that mindset comes from that lack of positivity. And I'm going to put this in a little bit of context because I don't need to explain to everybody what the last year and couple months have been like. I mean, it's been pretty bad. And some ways it feels like we're coming out of that, but we're not sure. It could be just like going to start back up again. Who knows? It's really difficult to predict. But in some ways, I think if you look on the lighter side of things, that this is an opportunity to reset a little bit on your own. And I've certainly tried to do that a lot. And I've shared some of that on this show that like just dealing with depression, the things that I've done, trying to get positivity in my ears with audiobooks or podcasts, trying to walk and exercise and do things to kind of keep my energy going and get my mind off of just the negativity that surrounds everything on the news and just take a diet and a break from all that stuff. And it's really worked wonders for me. But you know, now's the time. I mean, this is a good time to decide what is it that you want to do in life? What is it that you want to pursue? What is your passion? What are you positive about? What makes you want to get up in the morning? 
And then it's a matter of trying to pursue that and then watching for those opportunities. They're gonna come, I promise. Bad things happen now and then. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the financial crash of 2001. I remember the subprime lending crisis of 2008 and those were very difficult economic times. I didn't have any money in either one of those times. They were rough to get through. And I also remember at the time thinking, we'll never get through this. It just seems like an eternity. And well, guess what happens? The, corner turns eventually and you come around. And I realize the last year has not been at all like those. I think you could argue it's been much worse, but I still think you have to maintain that positivity. You have to look for those opportunities. I would love to know what you guys have to say. I think this is a discussion we could continue to have, but I wanted to share a couple stories with you. Drop me a comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.